Oh, I just noticed that drawer there for the first time. A picture. Let me uh, go ahead and take out the counter since they're talking. What the? Uh, that looks like Ace and the Ninth Man all celebrating with each other. And two other men in the picture. What the hell is this? This man with a mustache on the right. He's the same guy we found murdered in the captain's quarters. Oh, course. that was the captain. He had the zero bracelet on his left arm. And the second man with the glasses and a doctor's coat. He's the ninth man. The one with bracelet number nine. He died after he went into door five. But this guy, the one in the striped suit. Is that the guy who got thrown into door three? Man, that's Ace. Yeah, I guess it is. No doubt about it. But what does it mean? What is Ace doing in this picture? I got someone on my door. I'll be right back. So here's a random question of the day. What are the odds that... The bug exterminator guy for the apartment complex knocks on your door just as a close-up of Ace comes into view. <laughs> anyway, back to the game. Not only Ace, the ninth man and Cap too. And they look happy, like they knew each other well. Why? How? How in the world are these four men connected? You say Ace is in that picture? Yeah. It doesn't look like it was taken recently, though. Ace, the Ninth Man, and Cap all look about ten years younger. Ah, so the Ninth Man and the man you found murdered in the Captain's quarters are also in the picture? Yeah. Is there anyone else? Or are there only three people in the picture? I'm afraid I can't see it. Now there's one other person. No, there's one more guy. He's got kind of long hair, he looks smart, but a little cold. He's the only one I don't recognize. Hmm. What's the date of the photograph? It doesn't have one. Did you look on the back? The back? Yes, the reverse. The other side. Really, Jinpei? Come on. Huh. Praying for the success of the Nonary Project with Nijisaki, Kubota, and Musashido. Huh. Then the four men in this picture were the organizers of the Nonary game nine years ago. That means Ace, the Ninth Man, and Cap were all responsible for making it happen. But... I feel like I should be more shocked about this. It's almost as if that's just how things were always supposed to be. Or oh, it's almost like you knew this from a previous existence? Why? Why am I not surprised? Ace was the one in charge of the Nonary Project. But... why? Why am I so calm? It's like I already knew. <laughs> ah, of course. I understand now. Ace was the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. He was the one who invented the game nine years ago. He was Gintaro Hongo. Ace is... the Hongo? I had my suspicions from the beginning. Their voices were similar. Too similar to be a coincidence. I could never forget his voice. It was the voice of the devil. I couldn't be sure though. After all, I had no way to check. I certainly couldn't ask him. Even if I had known, however, I would never have told you. Zero made it quite clear what would have happened if I did. Oh my gosh, I had no idea. Huh? I didn't know that Ace was Hongo. Oh, yes. I suppose you wouldn't. Nine years ago, you were in Building Q in Nevada. But Hongo was in the Gigantic with us. I know. That's why I didn't know what Hongo looked like. But why? Why didn't you tell me? I mean, I'm your sister, right? You could have told me. I'm sorry. I apologize for keeping this from you. But if I told you, Clover, you would have told everyone else. And if you did, then I would have been forced to tell them about what happened nine years ago. I had to prevent that. <sighs> All the dots. Hey, Junpei. You think I could borrow that picture for a sec? Sure. <sighs> Hongo Kubota. Nijisaki Musashido. Is he trying to remember something? Hongo Kubota. Nijisaki Musashido. Hongo Kubota. Nijisaki Musashido. Hey, Seven, do you? Shut it! Just, just be quiet. 
I'm this close to remembering. This close. Hongo Kubota Nijisaki Musashiro Cradle Pharmaceuticals Nonary Project. <gasps> shit. What? What? What's wrong? Holy shit, this is nuts. Um, what's nuts? I remember. Remember what? Everything. Oh. Everything? Tell us. Spill the beans. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember all of it. My memory's back. Woohoo! I, I remember what happened before I got snatched. What? Uh. <sighs> all the dots. Let me tell you what happened. Like Snake said, Ace is Hongo from the right. The other three are Musashido, Nijisaki, and Kubota. Musashido was the man with the cash. Nijisaki was Hongo's right-hand man. And Kubota developed the actual technical details of the experiments. How do you know all this? Come on, man, I told you, I finally got my memory back. No, that's not what I mean. I'm trying to ask you why you knew all this stuff in the first place, before you forgot it. You really want to know? Of course. Me too. Me too. Hmm. All the dots. This is going to take a while. Hell, it'll probably take me a good three days to tell you everything. Dude, we got like, what, 15 minutes before the boat sinks? Well, we don't have three days. Just give us the short version, all right? Short version, huh? All right, fine. I'll give it a shot. No promises, though. I'm a detective. It's a little awkward to say this about myself, but you could probably consider me a lone wolf type. I hold to my own code, as I think doing what's right is more important than doing what you're told. That's why I followed my gut that night. A slim lead brought me to the wharf. It was nine years ago. The wharf had been cold as fuck, and I could barely see squat. I was investigating a mess of kidnappings, all of them children. It all had one thing in common. A history of visits to one particular hospital. A hospital under the management of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. And my investigation had turned up evidence that Cradle had been involved in the kidnappings. After a little sweet talking, I managed to finally get a real lead from someone inside Cradle. My source told me this. Tonight, a ship is set to take the children to a large passenger liner docked offshore. So I headed to the wharf. From the shadows, I searched the harbor until I found the ship he was talking about. There was a bunch of movement near it. Men in black suits, many of them were carrying large bags. The bags. There was something about the way they moved as they were carried. No doubt about it. There were human beings in those bags. I moved before I realized it. I came out of hiding, my gun already in my hand. Don't move. I felt metal touch the back of my head. Drop the gun. I could kill you right now. It'd be easy to get away with it, too. Just tie an anchor to your feet, and no one would find you for a week. That what you want? The so fish here would love a meal. Sounds like something out of a Dexter movie. Thing into my skull. Uh, Dexter TV show, sorry. Yeah, Y'all obviously Dexter. Great show anyway. <sighs> there was nothing I could do. I did what he said and laid my gun on the ground. Then suddenly, there was a sharp pain in my neck. A needle. A drug? That was my last thought. My face hit cold concrete. I was out like a light after that. And he woke up in his cell. <clears throat> I woke up on a hard floor. Damn it. Shit, my head hurts. I did a quick once over of the room. Where am I? A small, shabby bed, a dirty sink, a toilet with no privacy. I had seen it countless times as a cop. I'm in a cell, huh? Facing the toilet was a door set into the wall. I was still pretty woozy, but I made my way over to it. I pushed and pulled on it, but... <clears throat> it won't open. Not like I expected much else. Would be dumb enough to put me in a cell and leave it unlocked. Threw myself against the door a few times, but it wouldn't budge. I knew it. I gave up and made my way back to the bed. And sat down. I feel like we've heard all of this before. Hmm. All the dots. Huh. Even more dots. I sat there for a very, very long time. <laughs> Who knows how long. And then you heard voices, and you pried open the grate. Then, I heard a faint voice. There. Over... There it is, over there. It's a nine door. The voice was far away. I couldn't understand what it was saying. But I could hear one. It was pretty high. Probably a little kid. Huh? 
Hurry over here. I didn't hear anything else. No, it was several. Huh. I hear five or six, maybe more. Where? Where are they coming from? I pressed my ear to the wall and tried to listen through it. No, that's not it. Left. It's coming from under the bed? I hauled on the metal frame and flipped the thing over. And there it was. The bed had hidden an air vent under it. A hole in the wall was covered by a metal grate. I dropped flat on the floor and peered through the grate. I couldn't see shit, but I knew it in my gut. This was where those voices were coming from. Hold up. Why are there kids here? But then what my inside man told me popped into my head. Tonight, a ship is set to take the children to a large passenger liner docked offshore. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Am I on that ship? It didn't matter. All I knew was I had to get to those kids. I checked out the metal grate. Could I fit? I stuck my fingers in and grabbed it. And then... Yeah! How do you like that, you son of a bitch? <laughs> I finally got the damn thing off. Sweat was dripping down my face. So I wiped it off and crawled inside. The first bit or so was tight. I had a wriggle on my belly. I wind up eventually and there was space for me to crawl along on my hands and knees. I went from crawling like a worm in dirt to skittering like a bug. Couldn't say it was much better, but I'd take what I could get. And when I'd been in the thing long enough to start wondering where it'd take me... A massive sound nearly scared the piss out of me. It was like a heavy metal door had just been slammed shut. Then, there was a voice. What? I wasn't sure what it meant, but anything with incinerator is bad news. Then, almost as if that was a cue, I heard a mess of young sounding voices. A bunch of them were straight up screaming in terror. And all the sounds together made a howl that made the hair on my neck stand straight up. Damn it! What the hell is going on here? I scrambled through the duct as fast as I could. I made a giant racket, but I didn't care at that point. I soon found a metal door on the left side of the duct. The kids were screaming on the other side. I found it. I yanked the handle and threw the door open. I almost ripped the metal off its hinges. What the... what the hell is this place? I couldn't believe what I saw. The room had a dome up top, and there had to be about nine walls, all the same size. Up in the ceiling was an upside-down funnel. Almost like a chimney. I looked down. There they were. The kids I'd been searching for. So I see... I see June in the... Pink shirt, uh, white hair, probably Santa. Is that Snake or that might be Snake? And then the girl off to the left, I don't know her. They all gawked up at me, suddenly silent, for the moment, from surprise and fear. Scared of the room or me, I couldn't tell. Probably both, actually. <laughs> Not like I can blame them running into a mug like this when they're already scared shitless. And there's the nine door behind that. I snorted at my own dig at myself and turned to the kids. Don't worry, kids. I'm not your enemy. I'm one of the good guys. All of them stood there, frozen. Well, except one. He was a boy slightly older than the others in a private school uniform. Who the hell are you? He stepped forward and glared at me suspiciously. I'm a detective. I'm here to rescue you. It looked like they relaxed suddenly the second I got the words out. How are you going to help us? Where's the exit? There isn't one. The doors we came in through won't open, and the door over there... He kind of cut himself off. I think he was considering something before he changed his mind. Anyway, there's no point. We can't all get out of here. If we don't get out of here, we're going to be burned to death. Burned to death? Can't you hear it? That voice said the incinerator's going to start up soon. So... So... The 
voice spoke again. Incineration will begin in 15 minutes. They only had 15 minutes. I looked back down at the kids. Looks like a good 20 or 30 feet to the floor. No way I could pull them up. Too big of a distance for any of us to reach. What the hell was I gonna do? But then I got an idea. Wait right there. I'm gonna be right back. What? Where, where is he going? Are, are you just gonna leave us here? They just got frightened again. I'm not the best at that kind of thing, but I tried to reassure them with a smile. Don't worry, all right? I'll be back. I promise. So just stay calm and wait right there. Got it? I didn't wait to hear them respond. There wasn't time. Only 15 minutes, yeah. I had to hurry. Well, as fast as a guy could on his hands and knees. Didn't take me long to get back to my cell. Still no way out of there, but I had a plan. I needed something from the room. When I got it, I dove back into the hole and took off towards the incinerator. What did you grab? Then. Sorry to keep you waiting, guys. I tipped out the doorway and dropped down the rope I brought with me. There was a rope back there? In the cell, I'd torn the bed sheets into strips. Oh. Tied them together to make a rope. It was sloppy, but it got the job done. Smart right, man. Just tie that around yourself, okay? I'll pull you up one at a time. Right. Huh. Wait a sec. Something was off. There were more of you before. Where'd the rest of you go? The boy in the uniform answered. I let them go on ahead. We opened the number nine door and they left. What? You're telling me you opened that door? That's what I said. Then what the hell are you doing here? We couldn't go with them. Why not? Look, the only people who can go through the numbered door... He was in the middle of explaining when... Incineration will begin in five minutes. Come on, come on, come on. Time to move. The wall shook a bit and the voice bouncing around. Look, that can wait, all right? Just get us out of here. Uh, right. Grabbed under the rope. First one I pulled on was a girl with a ponytail. Next was a girl with a red necktie. A boy in a jacket came after her. He said he'd climb up on his own. The boy in the uniform was the last up. Like the other kid, he climbed up the rope himself. He looked pretty scrawny, but I guess he was stronger than he looked. He moved fast, but when he was almost to me, we heard some knocking. Everyone looked at the door. It had a thick, square window set into it. On the other side, an angry face was staring in. God damn it! What's going on here? What the? Why is the room empty? Where the hell are those fucking kids? The door opened, and a man stepped in looking half mad with fury. I recognized his face. I saw him many times in photos during my investigation. Ace? The man's name was Gintaru Hongo, the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. Hongo saw the boy hanging from the rope. Yeah! It was like he was an animal. He lunged for the rope. Hurry! I know! The boy in the uniform booked it up the rope. You son of a bitch! Get back here, you little shit! Fifteen feet. Ten. The second I could reach the kid, I grabbed him. I hauled him up and tossed him into the duck behind me. No! No! Hongo had lost it. His face didn't even look human. It was like the bastard pulled off his fake face. He was really a terrifying devil or some kind of damn monster. I quickly reeled in the rope, leaving a furious Hongo yelling at me from the floor. You fucking bastard! You won't get away with this! How dare you compromise this experiment! Experiment? What experiment? Incineration will begin in one minute. Hey, old man! What the hell are you doing? Hurry up! Time to go. The boy in the uniform was trying to get my attention. I may have thrown a salute in a raging asshole's face before I closed the door behind <laughs> me. I went to going back to the cell, so we went down the other direction instead. After about 30 feet, we came across another duct on the left. This one was heading down. We already nodded and took turns sliding down it. The duct emptied us out into a narrow hallway. There was a door on either side. The one on the left was a normal double door. But the one on the right was familiar. It had black and yellow stripes and a device next to it on the wall. The plate on it read, Incinerator. Incinerator? Yeah, that's where we were. It was the girl with the red tie who answered me. We were inside an incinerator? Yeah, Hongo might still be there. It looks like it's been shut off, though. Wait, what? If he's still in there... Yeah, that's not good. <sighs> that meant we'd better. We gotta get out of here. Go to the other door, hurry! 
The kids started running, and I was close on their heels. On the other side of the door was a large spiral staircase. Run! Didn't need to tell them twice. Went up and up and up. Our feet pounded the steps. Our arms pumping fast. Round, round, round. The devil was on the tail. <sighs> All the dots. The stairway kept going. We passed a couple of landings when the boy in the uniform suddenly spoke. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's Snake, because you see his eyes, they're closed. <sighs> Something's up. Akane's not catching up to us. Akane? My kid sister. The girl with the red necktie. Akane. Akane. That's strange. I didn't remember seeing that name on the list of missing kids. Hey! Akane! He kept his hands around his mouth and yelled. <laughs> Nobody answered him. Maybe we outran her. The boy in the uniform skidded to a stop. I stopped too. So did the other two kids. When did we do that? Well, we passed a couple big rooms on the way here. Maybe she took a rest in one of them? No, that's impossible. Sorry, Grandpa. You keep going. I gotta go look for her downstairs. He turned to go. Hey, kid, wait! God damn it, I said wait! I don't think the kid even heard me. Fuck! I spun around to the boy in the jacket and the girl with the ponytail. I'm going after him. You two keep going, all right? You got it? The girl nodded and ran up the stairs. But the boy... I'm going with you. <sighs> All the dots. I didn't have time to argue. I just nodded and took off down the stairs. I could hear him following me. We ran all the way to the bottom floor, calling for her. Akane was nowhere to be found. God damn it! Where the hell did she go? I could tell the kid was frustrated. And then suddenly... Help me! Somebody help me! Found her. We heard a girl's voice. Akane! The boy in the uniform threw open the door and leapt into the hallway by the incinerator. We rushed in after him. I couldn't for the life of me believe what we were seeing. That bastard Hongo had Akane by the arm and was forcing her into the incinerator. Come on, goddammit, move! Look at that evil uh, look on his face. It's hideous. No, I don't want to! Let me go, please! Let go of me! She planted her feet squarely on the floor and was struggling to get away. But Hongo was bigger and stronger. She wasn't gonna win. <sighs> Akane! My brother roared with anger and charged toward Hongo. Help me! Ah! You're too late, idiot! Hongo lifted Akane bodily into the air and threw her, still fighting him, into the incinerator. Ah! Before we could even blink, Hongo had leapt through the door after her. We saw him land inside. And then, the door slammed shut. We ran to the door. We did everything we could think of to get the thing open. But... Use the goddamn thing won't move an inch. He started slamming his fists against the door. He was close to shattering his knuckles with how hard he pounded on it. Akane! Akane! Are you okay? You came back! Her voice was muffled, but all of us could hear the sheer terror in it. What did I do? I I think I'm trapped in here. Where's Hongo? What? Warning. Warning. Oh no. Emergency incineration command has been acknowledged. Oh no. Automatic incineration will take place in 18 minutes. Please evacuate the incinerator immediately. Repeat. Emergency incineration command has been acknowledged. Are you fucking kidding me? It's the same damn thing. Are you there? Yeah, we're here. Just hang on, all right? We're gonna figure out a way to save you. His words would have seemed like a sick joke to her if she'd been able to see how white and bloodless his face was right then. Incineration will begin in 17 minutes. Please! Please help me! I'm really, really scared! I don't want to die! Please! I don't want to die! I don't want to die! It's gonna be alright! I'll figure something out, I promise! I promise, okay? You hear me? I promise! It was torture listening to her sobbing on the other side of the door. Her brother was nearly crying himself. He could only stand there. Fists clenched so tight his knuckles were white. <sighs> All the dots. Creaks uh, of the ship. What happened then? Come on, man. Put yourself in my shoes. It doesn't end good. 
Think I want to remember that? Then... Yeah. Shit. If I'd known it was gonna be like this, I almost wish I hadn't remembered. Hey, um, are you... are you sure? Huh? Look, I don't want to ask this either, but there's... there's something I don't get. Hmm. <laughs> All the dots. So if you could just tell me, did that girl, Akane, really... Yeah, I'm sure. There wasn't anything we could do. After a while, the countdown ended, and we heard something... burning. We... No. No. The fire stopped, but we still didn't move. Me and the jacket kid were frozen. The boy in the uniform collapsed as if he couldn't hold himself up anymore. A few minutes passed. The door opened. No. The boy in the uniform tripped over his own feet running in. We followed, too numb to speak. The air in the incinerator was hot. Every breath made my lungs feel like they were on fire. It was like standing on hot asphalt. The air was wavering, and in the middle of the room, there it lay. No. The kid's legs were shaking so bad, I don't know how he managed to walk. I couldn't see his face, but his body somehow looked empty. Finally, he reached it. He fell to his knees as his legs gave out on him. And then... No. Um, all the dots. Um, uh, can I ask you one more thing? What's that? Was her last name? The girl, Akane. What was her last name? What does it matter to you? That is a lot. Just, just tell me, okay? Please. Kurashiki. Her name was Akane Kurashiki. Oh, that's her. <laughs> all the dots. But how? Uh, 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 she must have survived somehow. But if she survived, does that mean that she's... No. Wouldn't Santa have recognized her? Does that mean that June and Santa may be working together? <laughs> oh, the dogs. <sighs> you were there that day, weren't you? The tall kid in the jacket. That was you, wasn't it? Yes, it was. You are correct, detective. Don't misunderstand me. I told you before how Zero threatened me. There was nothing I could do. I couldn't say anything about what happened nine years ago. So you're saying you're not working for Zero, right? Of course not. Clover, what about you? Hey, come on! You really think I'm working with Zero? I told you before, you idiot! I was in Nevada, in Building Q. I did hear that a detective rescued the kids on the boat, but I didn't know it was you. <laughs> Well, I guess I believe you. All right, let me ask you another question. Santa's real name is Aoi Kurashiki. That's Aoi. He's Akane's brother. You know that? No, no, I didn't, did you? Well, yes. I know Aoi Kurashiki was her brother, but I didn't know he was Santa. At least not from the beginning. Nine years ago, he was in the middle of puberty. His voice is entirely different now. I'm ashamed to say that even my exceptional hearing wasn't able to make that connection. Hey guys, you do know that Akane is June, right? As such, I had no reason to think Santa was Aoi. When did you figure it out? Clover told me that Santa might have been one of the subjects of the initial experiment. It was only a short while ago, while we were leaving the library. When she told me that, I had a... feeling. Santa is Aoi? Akane Kurashiki, June's brother? There's still a lot we don't know. Yeah, that's that's um, I mean, uh, come on. How, how many times can we say that? Like in the comment box, we were like, yeah, well, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And I'm like, the more answers we get from this game, the more questions they keep throwing at us. I mean, like a lot, a lot. But there is one thing I think we can say we know. What's that? The body we found in the shower room. It had to be Nijisaki, dressed up to look like Snake. What? Come on, man. What kind of detective are you? You didn't figure that out already? Hey, go easy on me, man. I just got my memory back, all right? Cut me some slack. Hmm. Well, if he is, the three murders make sense then, don't they? Yeah, that's right. Murder. 
Kubota blew himself up, but that was murder too. So why did these murders take place? If Junpei is correct, and the body in the shower room was Nijisaki's, that means all of the people who were murdered were involved with the creation of the Nonary Project. Kubota, the person who conducted the actual experiments. Nijisaki, Hongo's assistant. Musashido, the man who financed the project. You mean this was all just revenge? Santa is zero. He's getting revenge for the death of his sister. That's why he killed them. No, I, I don't think Santa actually murdered anyone. If I'm right, then it's not hard to figure out who the next victim's gonna be, is it? I'm pretty sure I don't have to tell you. Hongo. Yes. Yep. Right. The next target will be Gintaro Hongo. The person who planned the Nonary Project. In other words, Ace. Hey, um, Junpei, could you do me a favor and tell them about June, please? What? Wh what the hell's going on here? It must be 6 a.m. Our time is up. Oh, Shit. great. Come on, we need to get out of here. How? Key card. I'm betting this sucker opens the exit. Come on, let's go. New material has been added. Key card zero. Card key with the zero. Uh, card key with the zero in the middle of it. Zero. Zero. God dang it. Zero's just screwing with us, isn't he? Okay, we got new material. Picture taken six, uh, nine years ago. An old picture was in the drawer of the desk in the small colored room. It's a picture of the four people who created the Nonary Project. On the back of it was the following. Aim for the success of the Nonary Project with Nijisaki, Kubota, and Mashihido. Okay, so it looks like we have completed this puzzle at the time of... Oh my gosh, uh, an hour and 22 minutes. Before, well, technically, you know, I had the bug guy come in. Uh, so that clock isn't totally right. And then we had a lot of story exposition. But yeah, anyway. All right, let's just wipe the card. Jinpei, look. It's unlocked. Uh, yeah. I know we can go back to the library. Hurry up, Jinpei. We don't have time. Let's go. Let's get out of here. All right, let's go. All right, so unofficially 122.35. Officially, maybe a 115. Huh. I think or so. the shaking stopped. Yeah, well, we'll just say that. 115. Sounds good. It would seem so, but we are yet to be out of danger. You're right. Let's hurry. This exit needs the Uranus card, too. Hey, Junpei. Yeah, I know. All right, it's open. Let's go. Let's go. Go, 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 go. Okay, Neptune Key, let's see if you work. Yes! Oh, I think it unlocked. All the doors are opening. There's the incinerator. Incinerator. So this is the incinerator. This is the first time I've seen it from this side, but yeah. I think so. Then there ought to be a lever near the door. Yeah, right here. Pull that and the door should open. Got it. Why are we going inside? Can someone tell me that, please? Why are Let's we going go. in this scary building? Scary room, I mean. Santa. June. What the hell is going on? What's wrong? Are you okay? Please don't tell me they're dead. Jumpy. You came to get me. Of course I did. I made a promise. I'm so glad you're here. So glad. Hey, what happened to you? I'm fine. I just fainted. I wasn't feeling very good. I'm feeling... A lot better now, though. Why is she constantly not well? Are you sure? Yes. I just need to rest a little longer. I'm I'm sure I'll be fine. You shouldn't worry about me. Santa. Hey, where is it? Where's the gun? You hide it somewhere? I don't have it. I got sucker punched and they took the gun. What? Who took it? What? Isn't that obvious? I took the gun. Of course. Oh, uh, here we go again. Ace. <laughs> Just what the hell do you think you're doing, Ace? Or maybe I ought to say Gintaru Hongo, CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. You have me at a disadvantage, and I don't like that. You know me, but I don't know you. Do you have any idea how much I've suffered? Can you even begin to understand my pain? The pain of prosopagnosia, right? Yeah, cry me a river. Hmm. 
Another irritating insect. And how do you know that, hmm? Good question. No matter. If you don't want to answer, it makes no difference to me. This is a waste of time anyway. It's time for me to go. First is one. Give me your hand. Uh. Eight. And with this... Nine. The Ninth Man. Kubota's bracelet. I believe I've won this game. I've had quite a time playing with you. I must thank Zero, I suppose. Wait, what? Ace doesn't know who Zero is. Uh, uh. What the hell are you planning, Santa? At any rate, this game ends now. I will escape, and the rest of you will have a slightly less pleasant ending. I suggest you enjoy your final moments. Goodbye. Wait! <laughs> what? <laughs> Why isn't it opening? Because <laughs> that's not the night bracelet. <sighs> One more time. Ha <laughs> ha loser. <laughs> now open! Loser. No! What is this? Why? That digital root should be nine. It has to be nine. Then why? Why isn't it opening? Now! Yes. Yes. Take him out. No! Oh. All uh. oh, the dots. Oh, that was close. Too close. Thank you, Seven. Way to go, Seven! My man, I never doubted you for a moment, Seven. I just want you to know, I never... ever... Okay, maybe I did. But, you know, I never doubt you now. You're, you're the man. Don't mention it. Just one punch ain't enough for this piece of shit. After what he did nine years ago, I oughta rip him to pieces. But if a suspect can't talk, they ain't much good. Once he's locked up in a cell, we're gonna have a little chat. <sighs> Nine years ago? Uh, then you must be... Yeah, you finally figured it out, dumbass. <sighs> All the doubts. Ace, you killed Kubota, Nijisaki, and Musashido, didn't you? Wait, Nijisaki? Oh, right. You don't know yet. All right, we'll just go through them in order then. Let's start off with Kubota. You talked to Kubota and managed to convince him to go into door 5 alone. You killed him without making it look like you killed him. The way I figure it, you had four motives. One. In the Nonary game, the number 9 is dangerous. Whoever had the 9 bracelet could join whatever team they wanted. Adding 9 to any number doesn't change the digital root, which means that number 9 could do whatever they wanted. You wanted to remove that threat as soon as possible. Two. You wanted the number 9 bracelet for yourself, so that you could make use of its power. In fact, you did use it in the murder of Niji Saki. 3. Even if his number hadn't been 9, Kubota was a problem. He knew your past. He knew what had happened 9 years before. You needed to silence him before he told anyone. 4. But last, and perhaps the most disturbing, you used Kubota as a test. You wanted to know how serious this nonary game was. Was it truly life or death, or simply a harmless prank? You convinced him to break the rules so you could see what would happen. That was why you killed Kubota. But he was only the first. Next was Nijisaki. While everyone was off looking for the missing parts for the Reds, you ran into Nijisaki near the big hospital room. However, because of your prosopagnosia, you didn't realize he was Nijisaki. Chiefly because, when you met him, he was dressed like Snake. Well, how'd he kill the captain, now? That was why you thought Nijisaki was Snake. No, that that's not... That was Nijisaki? Why? How did... I'll get to that. Anyway, you thought he was Snake. Snake was one of the kids in your experiment nine years ago. You remembered him because he was the blind kid. But his presence made you think. Snake was one of my subjects nine years ago. He probably hates me. But if that's true, why isn't he saying anything? Is he keeping quiet because he can't see? Or perhaps he's working with Zero to get revenge on me. Whatever the reason, anyone who knows my past is a threat. Before he tries anything, I need to get rid of him. 
That was when you decided you had to kill him. The murder weapon was Kubota's bracelet. You just waved it over the red. Verified your own number and then grabbed Nijisaki's arm and forced it over the scanner panel. Then, when the door opened, you kicked him in. Nine seconds later, the door closed. And then 81 seconds passed. And poor Nijisaki was dead. And you mean to say, Snake is still alive? Sorry to disappoint you, but I'm as good as new. <laughs> Thank you for killing the wrong man. But I can't say I like knowing that you wanted me dead. That's true. Although, to be honest, even if you hadn't tried to kill me, I would still hate you very much. And well deserved as well. <laughs> well, I wouldn't blame you. <laughs> exactly. Last but not least, let's talk about Musashido's death. Yeah, let's talk about that one. When Clover and I were investigating the chart room, you came over to talk to me. Do you remember what you said? Oh, a pocket watch. Might I take a look at it? I handed it to you, and you left the room. You had been in charge of the Nonary Project. Of course you would have known the solution to every puzzle, which would mean that you also knew how to get out of the wheelhouse. All you had to do was place the watch in the indentation on the door to unlock it. With the door open, you could enter the captain's quarters. Musashido was there. Conveniently placed next to him was an axe that practically begged you to kill him with it. You picked up that axe and buried the blade deep in the other man's chest. Aww. One blow was all it took, and then you returned to the chart room as if nothing had happened. There was, there was something, something I, wanted I wanted to speak, to speak with you about, about Junpei. Junpei. Could you Could come, come with me for a moment? I had no reason to say no, so I followed you to the wheelhouse. When we stepped inside, remember how you slipped your hand into my vest? You pulled out a piece of paper, the one I used to cheat during the vote. But that wasn't really what you were after. What? Your true purpose had been to slip the watch into my pocket. Ah. It wasn't a very good plan had way too many holes, and someone saying the wrong thing could have brought it all down around you. You must have been desperate. But what made you willing to risk it all to do it? Ace, Musashido's murder is the only one I don't understand. You obviously did it, but why? Because of this. What's with the paper? Just read it. Huh. All the dots. Let's see. Number one, there are two ways you might survive this ordeal. The first is to win the nonary game. The second is for you to confess your sins of nine years past. I have prepared a camera in the captain's quarters. The images captured by that camera will be streamed through a satellite and distributed across the world. Simply look into the camera and repent. Once you have confessed everything, I will release you from this ship. To make your confession more credible, I have left you a witness in the captain's quarters. Perhaps he will confess with you. The decision is yours. Do as you please. That's how he knew. Zero. Hmm. All the dots. When I awoke in that room on D-Deck, I found that in my pocket. Hmm. That was why I chose door one when we voted. If I went through that door, I knew I could get to the captain's quarters. As you said, I knew how to enter the wheelhouse. My plan was to find the pocket watch before anyone else. If I could, then my alibi would be set. At least, that was the plan. Unfortunately for me, you got to it first. That sleight of hand was the best I could manage on short notice. You meant to kill him from the beginning then? <laughs> uh, Musashido, I mean. I only knew Musashido was the witness after I reached the captain's quarters. I asked him, and he answered. He seemed groggy. Perhaps he had only just awoken from sedation. I suppose Nijisaki was in much the same state. He seemed confused and disoriented when I encountered him. <sighs> All the dots. But yes, you are correct. I intended to kill him from the beginning, even though I didn't know who he was. I proceeded to the captain's quarters in order to remove this so-called witness. <sighs> All the dots. Ace, you figured it out, haven't you? You were being manipulated. Yes, so it would seem. I was little more than a puppet. And everywhere I went, everything was already prepared. The reds in the large hospital room were dismantled. Nijisaki was dressed like Snake. There was an axe in the captain's quarters. Musashido was delirious from the anesthetic, so he couldn't fight back. 
Nijisaki as well. In retrospect, I can't understand how I could have fallen into such a simple trap. But yes, yes, this was a trap. It was Zero's trap. And I fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. I did everything he wanted me to do. Yeah. By manipulating you, Zero was able to kill three people and keep the blood off his own hands. All of this was revenge for what happened nine years ago. That's why this nonary game happened. Am I right, Santa? <laughs> huh? What the hell are you talking about? I don't know any- Oh, come on, dude. It's so obvious. Ain't no point trying to play dumb anymore, Santa. Actually, I guess I should call you Aoi Kurashiki, huh? My memory came back to me, kid. You're Aoi Kurashiki. No doubt about it. Never thought I'd be back in this room talking to you. <sighs> all the dots. But hey, I guess this was all part of your plan, right? After all, the person who planned the nonary game this time around was Zero. And Zero's you. <laughs> Looks like you really do have your memories back, huh? Well, I guess there's no point in hiding it then, huh? Yeah, you got me. I'm Aoi Kurashiki. I was one of the kids in the nonary game nine years ago. I made it out. So did Snake over there. But there's one thing... No, I, I guess there's two things you got wrong. Yeah, what's that? Number one, I ain't zero. Wait, what? Uh, yeah, you are. What? Uh, Wait, what? Huh? N no, you definitely are. Stop lying, dude. Like, there's no point in lying. Sure, I was helping Zero out, but I'm really more of an assistant, like a secretary. What? Well, uh, eight. So when I said earlier, if June and Santa were working together, no. But an assistant's only an assistant. No. I didn't come up with all this. All I did was follow Zero's orders. Then, if you're not Zero, who is? Calm down there, Junpei. <laughs> didn't I say two things? You made one more mistake. Junpei, you just said all of this was revenge for what happened nine years ago. That's why this nonary game happened. Yeah? But that's not it. Revenge isn't the only purpose. Now what? There's another reason you guys were playing the nonary game. <sighs> to save someone. What? Save someone? Right. You were brought here to help my sister. What? To save Akane. But she's right there. Like, can, can you please swivel the screen slightly to the left? Because she's right over there. She's not dead. You faked her death somehow. What the hell are you talking about? Akane Kurashiki died nine years ago in this room. I was there. I saw... Uh... What? What the hell? Where's... Where is she? Where's Akane Kurashiki? Uh, oh, my head! Uh, my head, it... Feels like it's gonna pop. What the heck is going on? Seven! What the hell is going on? Exactly. Thank you, Lotus. I don't know. I don't know, I just... Oh, I swear to God, my head feels like it's about to explode! What was the Nonary Project? I'm sure you know already, but I'll tell you one more time. It was a project designed to test a particular phenomenon. Yes, the morphogenetic field. And what was that phenomenon? For two organisms to communicate with one another in the absence of physical contact. The morphogenetic field theory. Could human beings use these invisible fields to exchange information? That was what this experiment was conducted to determine. <sighs> All the dots. There were two separate locations. One was the gigantic, and the other was a building in Nevada called Building Q. The nine children trapped in Building Q were faced with numerous puzzles, copies of identical ones on the gigantic. They were told to send their answers into the morphic field set and transmit them to their brothers and sisters on the gigantic. <sighs> All the dots. The transmitters were put in building Q, and the receivers were put on the gigantic. Each sibling pair was supposed to be split up, but... But there was a mistake. Akane was a transmitter. She should have been in building Q. However... Yeah, I noticed that. She was with you. For some reason, she was placed on the gigantic with the receivers, like me. Perhaps she was mistaken for someone who was supposed to be in group A. Whatever the case, Akane ended up on the gigantic. <sighs> All the dots. I think I've told you enough. 
You get it, don't you? No, I don't. I'm pretty sure you know where this is going, Junpei. No, I don't. Where what is going? Don't play dumb. I'm not playing dumb. I'm actually dumb. I don't understand. You know things you shouldn't. Things you couldn't. Okay, well, that's true. How did you know Ace had prosopagnosia? How did you know why Ace wanted to kill Kubota and how Nijisaki was killed? Were you surprised when you found out Ace was Hongo? And what about the coffin Snake was trapped in? How the hell did you open it? Well, that's... What? He knew because I knew. Junpei was receiving information that I sent to him through the morphic field set. It's simple, really. What the heck is going on? How do I know the alternate futures then? Imagine a river that splits in two, like an upside down Y. The river flows from the top to the bottom from a single stream into two branches. It only flows in one direction. It can never go backwards. Information is the same way. It moves from the past to the future, but never flows backwards. That's why people at the river source in the past will never know about those downstream in the future. But the people downstream will know about one another either. Information only flows along the path of the river. But I am different. I can manipulate the morphic field set to pluck knowledge from the future. I know what happens on either fork of the river. Even though the people on either fork know nothing about one another. Now, who am I? I am I, the ninth letter of the alphabet. But I'm also zero. No, that's not true. I'm not really zero. Now yeah, perhaps you could say I am less than zero? Zero is my future. In nine years, I will be zero. What? What is, what's, what is going on? Where, where did she go? June. No, Akani. Where did you go? Santa! Why is Clover? Oh, it's... Freeze. Santa's got the gun. Guess he picked it up when we weren't watching. Looks like he turned the tables on Ace though. Wonder how he likes having the gun to his head. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you would like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more. Also, please do not forget, you matter. You are brilliant and you are loved. And you should always remember to be true to yourself. Don't let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly feathered flightless bird. Till next time.